Welcome to The Link. This is a program all about linking you with the resources in your community. I'm Joni Sutter. Today's show is our guest, E.C. Goodwin Technical High School, who is a part of the Connecticut Technical High School system, whose mission is to provide a world-class and rigorous learning environment for high school students and adult learners. Joining us today is their principal, Daniel Mello. Principal Mello, thank you so much for being with us on The Link. I'm delighted to be here, Joni. It's, it's an excellent opportunity for us to showcase our school to the community. It, it is, and E.C. Goodwin Technical has so much to offer the community and the, the kids that are graduating and who are still there learning. Um, can you tell us a little bit about the Connecticut Technical School System? Because I didn't realize that you don't uh, you don't operate under the superintendent in the city of New Britain. You have your own superintendent. Yeah, and it's, it's a rather unique setup. And to be honest with you, I'd like to uh, give a, a high praise to our superintendent, Dr. Nivia Torres, who uh, diligently works on our behalf. And as superintendent of the technical high school system, she's responsible for 17 high schools. Uh, most superintendents only have one. Uh, so she's done a fantastic job on our behalf. My goodness, I didn't even think about that. That's yes, right, yes. she does. Is yep. there an assistant superintendent? She has an assistant superintendent and we have a home office that's uh, located in Middletown. We have some consultants that work there on our behalf that deal with curriculum and trade matters for us. Okay, now when we look at EC Goodwin Technical in the, the scope of the 17 schools, you are cent the most centrally located. Are you the one of the largest as well? We are centrally located. We're probably a, a medium-sized school. We have 650 students. We currently have 11 trades, but we have more room for two more trades. And we're going to talk about not only the trades, but we're going to talk about the academic programs as well. But in a sound bite, could you tell me if, if you were going out to uh, talk to students about entering EC Goodwin Technical High School, uh, what is the one thing that you could say to them uh, about going to a technical school? Yeah, it, it, it's a truly unique experience. It's unlike any public high school in the state because when you come out of E.C. Goodwin or any of our sister schools, not only are you academically prepared, you also have a head start on your trade. Which is very important. We were talking before the show about manufacturing companies who actually come to the school and what are they looking for? They're looking for skilled workers. There are plenty of jobs in the state of Connecticut for manufacturers. There are local businesses in the community that frequently come to the school. We have a work-based learning program where we send our seniors out who work in some of these shops now. And some of our students are hired right after they leave school. So the problem isn't that there's no jobs available for the manufacturers. The problem is the manufacturers have difficulty getting experienced workforce. Yes. And so when someone comes into the technical school as a freshman, are they already in a trade or do they have to participate in some other academic courses first? The freshman year is a unique experience. As a freshman, you, you'll go through a, what's called exploratory. Exploratory is where you have to go through all 11 of our trades. Oh. So you rotate through every single trade and you receive a composite score. So you have to do well in all of those trades that you visit in order for you to have the opportunity to get into the shop of your choice after you've gone through this. The exploratory phase lasts, lasts from the beginning of the year until January when they finally select their permanent shop. First they visit each trade for two days, then they identify three or four trades that they visit for four days, and then they spend a longer period and then they select their shop. There's a test, you probably are familiar with the name of it, maybe there's more than one of these tests, that I help identify based on personality and other factors, what would be a good fit for a vocation for an individual? Well, and I always thought that that, would, that was so key to happiness in a, in a job-related activity. Uh, Joni, I, I, I need to tell you this, and I need to tell all of our listeners this, the technical high school system is uh, not the same system it was 15 or 20 years ago. Uh, we need young men and young women who are 
on top of their academics and in addition to that do have a certain aptitude for uh, you know working in these different trades so it's both it's not just one any longer it's not just uh, you know my son or my daughter they're good with their hands but they have trouble you know concentrating uh, on doing the academic work the math work or the English it's both it's both it's both so during let's talk about the the, uh, the shops that are available now with uh, potential um, potentials for two others but currently there's the automotive mm -hmm. carpentry computer aided drafting and design culinary arts we'll talk about that one too electrical plumbing and heating manufacturing information systems heating ventilation and air conditioning hairdressing and electronics technology. What would electronics technology encompass? Well, electronics technology, uh, you know, in the old days it was de dealing with a lot with uh, computer boards and stuff like that, uh, radios and things like that. It's transitioned to small machinery mm -hmm. and cer a certain amount of electronics that's involved in that. Okay. So some of it is computer faceted and uh, other parts of it are on uh, the board, what they call the board. So when do students make a decision to say, okay, I'm coming out of, of eighth grade and I'd like to go to E.C. Goodwin Technical School? Our counseling department uh, starts uh, visiting middle schools in the eight or nine communities that feed into E.C. Goodwin uh, in September and October. They, they go out, they meet with middle school students and assemblies along with other schools of choice mm -hmm. and that's how the the youngsters are exposed to our uh, technical high school system okay so then as a freshman you go in and every single one of the technologies that we just talked about you would have um, a sampling of yes and then in January uh, you would choose your trade right or uh, area of study and then you would also combine that with the academic part of yes, it, which very is important. the health, the science, math, social studies, English, language, arts, phys ed, uh, literacy lab, uh, and any electives that would come right, as well to as me. math lab. I math would lab. like to I would like to share this with our students and parents about academics because uh, you know we are moving in a direction where we're promoting rigorous uh, courses. Uh, for example, this past year we instituted an ECE uh, physics course that's an early UConn credit physics course interestingly enough about 14 out of our 16 seniors that were in that course received four credits for the University of Connecticut so we are ramping up our academics and it, in, that's phenomenal. while we're talking about that I think parents need to understand that in a technical high school a student only spends 90 days in academics and 90 days in their trade. So they have to master the same amount of material in half the time that a traditional public high school has. One other piece about the academics, we've instituted a new uh, math program. It's called the Alex program, which requires a student to master 80% of the content of, for example, Algebra 1 before they can move on to Algebra 2. So it's no longer a 60, the bar is set at 80%. So it's a very challenging environment, uh, not only in terms of the trades, but also the academics. You're asking a lot of these students, the word rigorous was used in, um, in what we were reading earlier. And I can see that that is true. Uh, but these students are coming out of the technical school and they're going right into very high paying jobs some. some. Some are choosing to go to college. Right. Uh, you had just mentioned this physics course with credits already for, for UConn. Uh, so it's not only for the, the child who wants to come out and say, okay, I'm not college material or I don't want to choose to be college material, so I'll just go right into the workforce, which is a fine choice if yes. that's what the, the choice is. We promote that. Uh, but college as well. If you break it down this past year, 40% of our students went on to a two or four year college and 35 went into a uh, area, trade area, or work-related area. Okay. So that, that's the breakdown this past year. And you, your graduating class was just 141 students. 
Well, 145. 145 George. students. 145 out of 147. Two, two of our students didn't quite make it this year. Okay, so uh, that is really offering so much to the students and some of the supplemental programs that uh, we learned about uh, that our folks need to learn about is the work-based supplemental oh, programs. Yes. What are those? Work-based learning is mainly done by our juniors and seniors, primarily seniors, and that's where we link up with uh, companies in the area mm -hmm. who are willing to take on our students in a work-based environment. So uh, when they go into their trade in their senior year, if they qualify for work-based learning, instead of coming to school when they're in the trade cycle, which runs approximately 10 days, mm -hmm. they would go to work for 10 days. Right on the job. Right on the job. Mm -hmm. So some of our students that have been involved in work-based learning have moved on to job opportunities as a result of that experience. Well, sure, it's the like same an company. internship. Yes. You know, you're, you're, I was telling Principal Mello before we started that one of the things that we see here at Nutmeg TV is students who are coming in even from college. Uh, in the TV industry, it's difficult to get work because mm -hmm. uh, there's not a lot of it that's available. And uh, without the work experience, you can have, um, you know, the education on the resume, which is important. But without the work experience, it's difficult sometimes to make that jump into an actual position. And I think that this offers that to the yes, student. Um, and I'm, I'm so excited to kind of talk about our technical system because it's flashing in my mind right now are our construction trades, for example, plumbing and carpentry. Mm -hmm. Our carpentry students are always out on what's called work-based production, so they could put a shed on your, you know, in your backyard. They could build a shed for you, or they could roof your house if you needed that. Now, how do people get in contact with the school for these kinds of initiatives? Do the well, companies you, come directly to the school who are looking for help? Any, work any, trades? any community member who needs some work done around their house, you know, if they need siding or roofing or deck work they can go to our state website and on our state website i don't know how to describe it but it's a it's a picture of a, a little man who has a hammer and saw and things like that you click on that and that'll take you to the site where you can actually sign up to have someone do work on your home well who knew that no i i never all these years knowing about ec goodwin tech never knew that that was even a possibility the, the only the only little caveat to mm -hmm. that is well you have to have home insurance which everyone does but it it can't be something you want done you know tomorrow right because students you know work in cycles right so they'll come out for you know maybe five or six days in a row but they can only be out probably three hours or four hours at the most per day. Right. Because, you know, then they have to come back. Right. Absolutely. To the school. That's wonderful. Now, um, the language arts and math labs, what, what are those? Well, because we only have students, you know, in academics for 90 days, mm -hmm. we need to support them, you know, in terms of making the transition, especially the, the ninth and 10th graders from middle school. Right. You see, right. So they have to get used to the cycle system. They're 10 days in academics, and then they're approximately 10 days in their trade. Well, while they're in their trade, we have what's called pullouts. So during the day, for an hour, they'll come out for either math or language arts support. Okay. So while they're in their trade cycle, they're still getting support in those areas. That's a lot that yeah. they're doing. Those they're are not labs. bored. They're no. not bored. No, they're they're not very, bored. They're very, very engaged. <laughs> yeah. And uh, you sound like you have a really wonderful um, faculty to work with too. Um, some of the teachers that you were talking about earlier were really great and even with the, the TV side we were talking that they do their own school news. Yes. In the morning um, you have um, some students, 10 or 15 students that are involved in that um, who have an interest in that which is great. And, and then career development. Guidance counselors, career, yes. how does that work? It's a, it's a, it's a natural. It's, it's a very natural because, once again, we are a trade school, a tech school. We do have, as, as part of our program, we do have a, a career development component 
and uh, certainly that's handled by a number of staff members as well as all of those trade teachers. Mm -hmm. So those students are getting their guidance, they're getting their support in terms of resume writing, right. they're getting their support in terms of uh, interpersonal skills, public speaking. Right. I don't know if you're familiar with our Skills USA program I'm not. too. Uh, mm -hmm. that, that's a national program Tell where we have it. students that become involved in competition in their trades. Matter of fact, we do have a, a uh, one of our carpentry students who's at Skills USA. I believe it's in Louisville, uh, you know, Kentucky this year, and he's representing E.C. Goodwin on the national level. You know, when I was in high school, now I'm dating myself. There was Vocational Industrial Clubs of America. Yep. Sounds similar. Yep. yep. And I was a nursing student, and so I was competing mm -hmm. in my nursing skills. Yep. And we competed on a state level. And then we actually won first place in the state, and so we competed nationally. And so that's, and you, you talk about an education. You know, mm -hmm. you're competing with other students, um, and it's outside of the sports arena. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about sports, though, at EC Goodwin. Yeah, that's interesting. You said uh, sports is a, a very, very important component. And once again, I'll reach out to our young people that are listening. Uh, certainly, we have a full array of sports at uh, EC Goodwin. Uh, matter of fact, our baseball team uh, made it to the States and made it to the second round and lost to uh, Waterford High School, who was uh, ranked, I believe, fourth in the state. So we had a very good year with our baseball team. We have basketball, girls and boys, softball. We have volleyball, girls volleyball. Uh, we have soccer. And, uh, you know, since we're a technical high school, we... we do not offer a lot of, uh, you know, all sports, but we have individuals that compete with their local communities representing E.C. Goodwin. So, for example, we had one swimming student that uh, certainly was credited to us who swam with his local uh, uh, public school team, right. as well as a wrestler, I believe, that was involved at New Britain High School who represented E.C. Goodwin. So there are opportunities to compete in other sports even though we may not offer the sport at the school. Okay. We're very proud of our sports program. We're very excited about our gladiators. Yes, yeah. and um, that helps is a lot of students. That's very important for them. The yeah, sports well, component is very important. It's something they want to be engaged in, and, um, and so that's wonderful. Now, your alumni, you know, these are the folks who, you know, graduate and, and still want to stay involved and, you know, get updates. Talk to us about that. You know, Joni, it's funny you should mention our alumni because this past year we just activated our alumni association. So we have officers and now they're starting to go through you know, the yearbooks and gather information. So that's something that we're working on. Mm -hmm. I know that one of our sister tech schools does a great job with their alumni association. So I got some ideas from them. They have a, a dinner each year where they recognize a member of the uh, alumni who has achieved, uh, you know, a certain uh, stature in the business community. Well, you uh, know, networking is so important. Dinner. You know, so if if you're out there and, and you're not networking, it can be difficult. You know, mm -hmm. let's say you're happy with your job or you've finished college and you've gotten this, you've had the experience of the technical uh, uh, programs that you've been in, uh, and now you're looking for you know, entering the workforce, it's important to be able to network. And so you may go back and visit a teacher. You may go back and visit one of the faculty members, one of the guidance counselors, and, you know, reacquaint yourself yeah. with the area um, manufacturing jobs or other jobs that are available. And that's so important. And it just, the networking component is key to success, as we know. You, you know what's interesting, uh, Joni, because a number of times you said that I've said things about the school and you said, wow, I didn't know that. Uh, it, being part of a state system, you know, public relations isn't something that usually comes to the forefront with mm -hmm. a state agency, that, you mm -hmm. know. But uh, in recent years, uh, under the leadership, I said, of our new superintendent, Dr. Torres, there's been a movement in that direction to let people know that we do exist mm -hmm. and that there are excellent opportunities for uh, young people mm -hmm. uh, to uh, take advantage of. And let's talk about $800,000, okay? You know how difficult it is. We're hearing how difficult it is with money in the state. Those of us that are nonprofit organizations feel the, uh, the other end of that, uh, and many of you can relate to that. $800,000, tell us yes. about that. Yes, uh, last year our uh, manufacturing shop 
received all new equipment, thank, thanks to the state, uh, $800,000, uh, new CNC machines, new lathes, the whole bit. Uh, you know, these are state-of-the-art pieces of equipment uh, that are certainly very valuable and this is what they're using in industry and we're grateful that we have the opportunity to prepare young people with this latest technology. Right, so your technology beneficial. programs are up to where yes, the industry are. is. So when the manufacturing, or I keep going to manufacturing, but when these companies come in and they look, they're saying, oh, these students are learning on what we have. Yes, our, our, our uh, well, it used to be CAD, but now it's mechanical design and engineering technology. We have a, a brand new 3D printer. <gasps> so, you know, one of our sister schools, once again, actually was producing limbs for, for veterans with that machine. So some of our schools ha do have uh, you know, that 3D printer. and We're fortunate enough to have one with our mechanical design program. Principal Mello, are there offerings for adults? The, you know, unfortunately, with the, with the state budget situation, I believe, I'm not sure the st exactly what's happening with some of our adult programs. I know, for example, though, with Grasso Tech, which is located in southeastern Connecticut, they just opened up a welding shop uh, because uh, Electric Boat is actively involved with, with the school to provide a labor force because if, if you know anything, we're going to be building a lot of submarines. Electric Boat got a tremendous contract, so they actually help facilitate uh, the, the welding shop that's going to be at Grasso Tech and my understanding is it is starting as an adult program. Because there's people, veterans, uh, as well as people who are changing vocations mm -hmm. who I, I know someone in my own family who would, you know, got self-study books on CAD, uh, went to adult education yes. which fell short uh, and so this is an area that I think many people would be interested in um, to, uh, to help with vocational transitioning. So, uh, in our remaining time, our time went by so fast, we're going to be seeing more from E.C. Goodwin Technical Schools on Network TV. Hope so. I hope so, too. <laughs> we're looking for a collaborative effort. But um, if people wanted to see the school, if people, and I'd love to take a tour, a video tour of the school, it'd be great, great for us to do so yes. we can show you what it looks like so you don't Definitely. have to uh, go over. But if you want to go over and you want to see, do, do you offer an open house over the we, we definitely, you know, or? our doors are always open. I, I mean, uh, we're very amenable to, to parents that want to come in and tour the school and things like that. We're very receptive. Mm -hmm. So we kind of have an open door policy. Uh, if you're a young person and you're thinking about uh, the technical high school system, when we do go around to the middle schools, make sure you get the information, get an application. The applications are usually uh, you know, available and they start reviewing the applications in December and uh, in March we usually send out letters of initial acceptance mm -hmm. because it, it's only an initial acceptance, there's other things that are looked at after that mm -hmm. uh, and it's, a very comp it's very competitive now because you know, there are only so many slots and usually we do have about 500 applications. Oh, that's so exciting. So these are things that you can think about in advance and kind of get your plans ready, maybe go over for a look, yes. and then, um, and then you know, definitively kind of decide, yes. because I would imagine those that have their applications in early and they're well thought out uh, would have a higher chance maybe of being accepted into the program. Yes. So, and one thing about, you know, I'll brag about our school one more time. Uh, it was renovated about eight years ago. Uh, it has a massive foyer area when you come into the entrance, uh, and it's state-of-the-art. Uh, state, of, state of the art. So well, it, we've it, got to come over know, there and take a look. You wouldn't be disappointed. I have an excellent maintenance staff. Uh, we have a, a very safe building in terms of three security guards, and we have a, a resident trooper. That's wonderful. Yeah, most so, of the schools have yes, that. Yes. And, um, and those resident troopers, we did a whole series with the police departments, and the resident troopers SROs, are so yeah. great because they're really interacting with the kids, and it's a lot more than safety. Oh, yeah. It's really, um, you know, uh, a friend for, for, for kids right. and, uh, and for, for so many reasons. Uh, but we forgot, and I have to quickly mention in our last 30 seconds, the culinary arts at oh your school. Oh my goodness. We have to talk, if you want lunch, you can go there and have lunch 
So we will be coming. Yes. We're going to be coming. Yes, gourmet meals for approximately $7. So wonderful, beautiful presentation. These are the students. Students great preparing. Place to eat. We're going to yep. definitely come and visit you. Yep. So uh, thank you so much for joining us today on The Link. And on behalf of all of us at Nutmeg TV, I'm Joni Sutter. Until the next time.